Hi, my name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist with Fish and Wildlife. Uh, today we're going to be talking about bullhead fishing. Uh, bullhead are a member of the catfish family. In Vermont, we have four native fish species that fall underneath the catfish family. Uh, those species are the channel catfish. The largest of those gets up to about 30 pounds. Stone cat, which is a Vermont listed endangered species, typically about six to eight inches in length and lives in streams. Uh, brown bullhead, which is the most common of those, occurring statewide, and which, which is the one we're going to be referring to today. Uh, they get to about 15 inches in length and they're very tasty. And then we have yellow bullhead. Yellow bullhead are only found in tributaries and along the shores of southern Lake Champlain. And they reach about 15 inches in length. They're not found anywhere else in Vermont other than Lake Champ uh, Southern Lake Champlain and its tributaries. For today's video, though, we're going to be focusing specifically on the brown bullhead. Uh, it goes by several different names. You might hear it referred to as bull pout, mud pout, corn pout, or mud cat. Uh, the state record for brown bullhead is three pounds six ounces, and were caught in Hubbardton Pond in 1976 by Frank Parker. Uh, bullhead have a smooth olive brown to dark brown flanks with a sharp stout spine on the leading edge of the dorsal and pectoral fin. Uh, they also have a broad flat mouth surrounded by six whisker-like barbells. So when you pick up a brown bullhead, you have to be very careful with those spines so that you don't get pricked. Before we talk about fishing techniques, it's important to focus a little bit on ecology. So once you understand the aquatic ecology part, it's a little bit easier to get out there and go fishing for them yourself. A brown bullhead are typically found in muddy lakes, ponds, and streams. So they prefer really uh, soft, mucky bottoms. And typically shallow water is where you're going to be finding them. Uh, one neat thing about brown bullhead is they do really well in low oxygenated conditions. Uh, so a body of water that has very poor oxygen levels that other fish wouldn't be able to survive in, uh, brown bullhead actually thrive in that. They feed, they feed on aquatic insects, such as a wide variety of insects, but worms, snails, crayfish, aquatic plants, as well as other small fish. Uh, bullhead are most active at night while feeding and they use their chin, barbels, and whiskers to detect food. So you can fish for them all through the day and still have luck with them, but typically they're going to be most active at night, and that's usually when most people prefer to go out fishing for bullhead. What's happening right now in Vermont, and right now when I'm recording this video, it's about April 1st, is we're in pre-spawn. Uh, in pre-spawn, uh, bullhead are actually moving into shallower water, so they're moving up. Uh, streams and rivers such as the Paltney River, Dead Creek, those areas, and they're moving into shallower bays, which makes them a lot easier to target. And you're going to see a lot more people fishing for them right now as we start to get into that pre-spawn, which typically happens a few weeks after ice out. And it's one of the best times of the year to actually get out there and go do some bullhead fishing. Again, you can fish for them year-round, uh, but right moving into the pre-spawn is usually where you're going to have the most luck fishing for them. One main thing you need to know about bullhead fishing, though, is a little bit understanding of our regulations. For bullhead, uh, one thing that makes them a little bit unique in terms of our fish species in Vermont, we have such high populations of them, and they're doing so well reproducing on their own, that we do not have uh, set length limits on them or uh, quantity limits on them. Uh, so there's no restrictions on how large it needs to be as well as how many bullhead uh, that you can keep. Uh, in terms of other regulations you should know, though, there's some equipment-specific regs uh, that are important to be aware of. Uh, in Vermont, we have a lead sinker law. Any sinkers half an ounce or smaller uh, cannot be lead, so they have to be some sort of lead alternative. Uh, another important one to be aware of is the number of lines you're allowed to fish with, and that is two while we're open water fishing, and that's two per person. Uh, so now that we've talked a little bit about regulations, ecology, and brown bullhead themselves, it's time to talk about how to actually target them when we're out there, when I'm fishing for them. There's a lot of different ways that you can rig your line up for bullhead fishing. Uh, the basic concepts are all the same. You want a heavy weight, uh, some length of distance up your line from your hook. I'm just going to show you one particular way to do it, but there's a lot of different ways out there to, to do this. Uh, so for starters, uh, you need five things, other than, of course, your rod. Uh, so you're going to need uh, a heavy weight uh, for this style. I prefer uh, this kind of egg style sinker, uh, barrel swivel, plastic bead, and about a size 6 hook. I prefer uh, larger uh, uh, shanks on the hook, so this is about a 3XL hook. And that makes it a little bit easier to get out of the bullhead as well. Now, the last thing you'll need is in addition to your rod and line, I want about a foot and a half to two feet of line uh, that's cut and separate. 
Uh, so to get started, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my line that's attached to my rod, I'm going to take that sinker, slide it down, then I'm going to take my bead, slide that down the line as well. From there you go into your barrel swivel, tie that on. Now to tie it on you can just use a basic clinch knot is really all you need, or whatever, whatever fishing knot you prefer. Once you've got that tied on good, uh, you're what you want to do is grab your other line. So that extra piece I had you cut in the beginning and set off to the side. Now you're going to tie that on. So basically you're just tying that on to the end of that barrel swivel. Once you've got that tied, take your hook. Tie it on to the other end. And that's your basic rig. So you see I hold it up right here. You have your hook which is out here about two feet off your line. Then you've got your weight which is further up. That bead that we put in is preventing that, 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 uh, that weight from sliding too much and going right up and over uh, your barrel swivel. So the bead's actually really important to the, this setup. Uh, one nice thing about it is when you cast, this weight's still able to slide and that'll give you a little bit extra momentum as you're casting out there. But when it's actually down on the water, it's not going to be able to slide down to your actual bait so it won't get in the way. You'll still have plenty of distance uh, from your weight uh, to uh, your night crawler, which is going to be on the end uh, as your bait. And again, use a big nice ball, ball of night crawler. So a big worm is really what you need. Your last step would be to cut off your extra line. And that's all there is to it. You can do a lot of different, I mean if you have different weights you can, you can rig it other ways. That's really just the basic concept uh, that you need for bullhead fishing. And once you got this done, cast it out there and then just let it sit. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, when you cast it, you should not be touching your line. Your rod should just be sitting there, leaning up against something and just let it be. Uh, they're one of the more simple fishes to fish for. You can fish for them with a lot of different types of bait, uh, things such as night crawlers, dough balls, uh, cut up hot dogs, chicken livers, all work really well. You probably have the most luck going with a big ball of night crawlers. Uh, in contrast to other types of fishing where I'd be casting my line out really them in, you don't want to do that with bullhead fishing. Because remember, bullhead, uh, when they're feeding, they're going to actually be feeling around uh, with those barbells, and they're looking for food that way. So if something that's moving really fast across the bottom, they're not going to go after. You want your bait to actually sit right on the bottom. So what you're going to do is tie on a heavy sinker, and you're going to cast that out there with your, your uh, worm, a hook, about a foot and a half to two feet beneath your sinker. And you're just going to let that sit there. And the best way to do that is to actually prop your line up on a stick. So you want your line to be nice and tight, and the bullhead take it, they're just going to move just a little bit. So you might notice the, the faintest movement in your line. Uh, one way to really notice that would actually be to take a clothespin and hook it onto your line uh, so that you can see that movement. Once you see a little bit of movement, then you pick up your line, set the hook, and that's all there is to it. If you choose to keep your bullhead once you catch it and find some really neat uh, flame videos online that will show you how to, how to cut off a bullhead.